What's going on guys, it's Cooper Codes, and in this video we're going to make this drag and droppable list where you have three different items and you can move these items up and down the list like this. In order to create this functionality, we are going to be using DND Kit, which helps you create drag and drop things for React. DND Kit is super interesting because it's very expandable. You can turn any React component into a draggable and droppable element, and that's why I chose this library is because the skills you learn in this video are going to be applicable to your own projects or different draggable and droppable things. Let's get started by going to an empty folder in Visual Studio Code and then creating a React project by saying npx create-react-app. I'm going to name this app client. All right, so our application is ready to go. We can CD into client by saying that there. For this project, we're going to need to install a couple different libraries. I'm going to start by npm installing react-bootstrap and bootstrap. Next, we're going to install all the different packages we need for the drag and drop functionality. So npm install at dnd-kit slash core at dnd-kit slash utilities and then at dnd-kit slash sortable. These three different installs give us access to different parts of the DND kit library. We can start by going to app.js. We don't need any of the boilerplate for the React application, so we can delete it here. I'll just make this a little hello h1 for now, but this isn't necessary just to get rid of the error. Now let's get started with importing everything we're going to need for this application. Firstly, we are going to need to import the bootstrap styling because we are going to use bootstrap cards for our list. So say import bootstrap slash dist slash CSS slash bootstrap dot min dot CSS. That gives us access to the minified version of the CSS for bootstrap so we can have bootstrap components in our project. I'm then going to import container from react dash bootstrap slash container. This gives us a bootstrap container to put our application in. Now we are going to need a couple of imports from at dnd-kit slash core. The first one is dnd context. This is the context that we need in order to have drag and drop functionality enabled for dnd kit. We also need this thing called closest center. This is one of the different ways we can do collision detection. So pretty much how the dragging and dropping actually works. Closest center helps us so we don't have to write out all that different logic to see where we should drop something. Now we need to import a couple things from a separate DND kit library here from at DND kit slash sortable. Firstly, we're going to need array move, which I will explain more in detail later. Then we need a sortable context. And so a sortable is kind of like that list we saw, how we are moving things around. And then we're also going to get access to the vertical list sorting strategy. This helps us with some sorting functionality so we don't have to write it out ourselves, which I'll explain more later. Then lastly, we are going to have a use state handle the items in our list. So we're going to import use state from React. So let's get started with actually coding out our app. Firstly, I'm going to store a bunch of different programming languages inside of a list. So I'm gonna say const languages and set languages is going to be equal to a use state that is going to be an array with values in it initially. For example, I'm going to say JavaScript, Python, and TypeScript. I'm going to have these be simple strings at each point in our array. If you're working on a project that demands different attributes, for example, at each part in your list, then you can also have an array of objects so you can have all that different data in your list. But for this video, we're going to keep it simple. If we're at JavaScript, that means we are at the JavaScript item. So let's get into how DND kit helps us make React drag and drop. We need to have everything that uses drag and drop functionality be within a DND context. This is similar to other contexts if you've seen them before. It allows everything within it to have functionality that allows us to use the DND kit. We can do some things here to define specifically how we want our context to work. For example, we want the collision detection of this context to be closest center, which is something that we imported right here from DND kit core. When the user is done dragging an item inside of this context, we might want to run a function, which is what we were going to do for this video. So on drag end is an event that we can listen for. And whenever the on drag end event gets hit, we can define a function for it to call. For example, handle drag end, which for now, I'm just going to make a function down here to show you guys how this works. We can say function handle drag end, then we can pass in an event. And if you're like, where's this event parameter coming from? 
If we go over to on drag end right here, we actually get access to an event from the DND context, as you can see right there. I'm not going to do any advanced functionality inside of this function quite yet, but I'm just going to console.log drag and called so we can see that later. I'm now going to make an H3 that says the best programming languages because the little project that we're doing here is that you can rank all the different programming languages and put the one you like the most on the top. Let's npm start our application to make sure everything's working so far and that we can see this web page. All right, the web page is looking good. As you guys can see though, this header is really kind of stuck in the top left of the screen. So I'm going to use a bootstrap container to kind of center the content of this application. We've already imported the bootstrap container right here. So we can go down and say container like this, and then let's put the H3 inside of there. I'm gonna add some styling to the container here just to make it, everything in our application look nicer. I'm going to start with a class name of P-3, which is gonna give a padding three around the container. I'm also going to set a style equal to width of 50%. This is going to make the container less wide. As you guys will see, we don't have that much content here. So it kind of makes sense to make the component here a little bit skinnier. Then I want to make everything aligned to the center, which is a property that the bootstrap container gives us access to. So we can say align center to do that. Let's go back to our local host and see what this looks like. All right, the web page is looking good. Now we are going to work with something from DND kit called a sortable. Sortables allow us to have different items displayed in a particular order and also move them around, kind of like in the example I showed initially. In order to use sortables, we have to have a specific sortable context just for the sortables themselves. A sortable context requires that it has the items of what you're trying to show. For example, we want to show all those different blocks of data for the languages that we defined in our state above. The sortable context also wants a strategy. So how should it sort this data? We want to use a vertical list sorting strategy. So it shows up vertically as opposed to like maybe horizontally where it's one after another, for example. So I'm going to make a comment here. Within this sortable context, we need components that use the use sortable hook. The use sortable hook allows us to create React components that are able to be interacted with by the sortable context. So for example, are able to be drag and dropped within this context. Let's go make a separate React component so we can make a bunch of different cards, for example, that show these different programming languages up here. And then we can use the use sortable hook on those cards so they're able to be dragged and dropped. I'm going to make a new file here and I'm going to call it sortableitem.js. I'm going to start by importing a couple of necessary libraries to create a sortable item. For example, import that use sortable hook that I was talking about before from DND kit slash sortable. I'm also going to import CSS, which is going to give us some nice access to creating some transforms. So you can pick up a card and move it around. For example, that's going to come from DND kit slash utilities. Then I'm also going to import the card from react dash bootstrap. I'm going to define our functional component like this. I'm going to export it right away. And then I'm going to say function sortable item. And then we're going to need the properties for this item. So I'm going to pass in props there. I'm also going to pass in IDs to every single sortable item. So we are going to get access to that through props.id. I'm just going to assume that each language is a unique key. So we're only going to have one JavaScript. So JavaScript is going to be the ID for a certain card. The use sortable hook allows us to create a sortable element in React. And we can tell use sortable that we want this sortable element to be of a certain ID. We can point it to the props.id that we are going to pass in. We can point it to the props.id that we are going to pass in when we create sortable items. When this hook gets ran, it's going to give us access to a bunch of different properties from use sortable. So I'm going to say const, then I'm going to use the object syntax like this so we can get all those different properties out of the use sortable hook. For example, we get an attributes from use sortable. We get a listeners, for example, on drag event, on drop, stuff like that. Also set node reference, which is incredibly important because that allows us to tell use sortable exactly which node to attach to, which I'll show later. We also get access to transform and transition. Transform and transition help us create functionality when it comes to picking up a card and having it move around. So we can define the style of our sortable item by saying const style is equal to. We can define the transform property, which allows us to pick up a card and move it around. 
by using the css.transform.toString and then the transform that the use sortable gives us. Then we also want to put the transition here. This is defined as best practice in the DND kit documentation. We can now return the component. We can first make a simple div that's going to wrap around our entire component. An incredibly important part of this div is this ref is equal to set node ref. This allows our use sortable hook to understand that the div we want to drag around is everything that is within here. This is what we want to drag around is this. We can set style equal to that style object we defined above. Then we can also use something called the property spread operator. If you're curious, I would recommend and go Google that where you can say dot, dot, dot attributes. So if we have anything inside of the attributes object, it's going to become a property of this div. And then the exact same thing with dot, dot, dot listeners. If there's anything inside the listeners object, we're also gonna pass it in as a property to this div as well. I wanna make a huge point. We can have any code inside of this div and it's going to be draggable and droppable at this point. So I'm just going to make a simple card from Bootstrap, but I just want to make a huge point in the emphasis that you can really make any element and make it draggable and droppable using DND Kit. The card is going to have a body property, which is some easy shorthand to make a Bootstrap card really fast. I'm also going to give it a class name of M3, so there is some margin between our Bootstrap cards. We know that our props.id is going to be something like the language JavaScript, for example, here. So I'm just going to say props.id and show it as a text of the card. All right, so we're done creating the sortable item here. Let's go over to app.js and import it. I'm gonna to go to the top and import sortable item from dot slash sortable item like this. In our sortable item code, we wanna make sure this is react dash bootstrap slash card. There we go. Go back to app.js. So we can now map over our state in order to create a bunch of different use sortable components. So we can say languages.map. We can take the current language that we are at. So it's going to be like JavaScript, Python, TypeScript, etc. Then we can pass it into a sortable item like this. We want to make sure to give it two properties. The first one is the key, which we're going to set equal to language. That's just so every component has a unique key, which is React best practice. And we also want to set the ID of this component equal to the language as well. So let's go see what our application currently looks like. We can see that we have the three bootstrap cards, each with unique keys, which is super great. But if we try to move them, for example, if I try to move Python above JavaScript, Python's gonna go back to the middle every single time. Same thing, TypeScript's gonna be in the same spot. JavaScript's always gonna stay in the same spot. And so how do we fix this? So let's take a look at this. Whenever we drag and drop, for example, it's going to say drag end, and it's going to get called right here. And if we move it down to TypeScript, for example, it's going to get called again. The reason why our cards are staying in the same exact place every single time is because our state, that array of strings, is staying the exact same. When the drag end happens, we can actually get access to where we stopped. For example, is JavaScript on the bottom? Was JavaScript in the middle? And we can move the actual blocks around in our state based off where the user is ending their drag. So if we go over to handle drag end here, we can actually get started with that. So we can say const active and over is equal to event. This allows us to see the active card that the user is pressing on and the card that the user is pressing over, for example. So we can say console.log active is equal to the active.id and then console.log over as well. So let's go over to our application and see what it's logging. So if I grab JavaScript and I put it over TypeScript, it's going to say active is JavaScript and over is TypeScript. If I grab Python and I put it over TypeScript, it's going to say active is Python and over is TypeScript. So we can make some logic here to define how we want our state to move around. So I'm going to say if active.id doesn't equal over.id, so if it's not like the same one being dropped on the, you know, Python's over Python, for example, we want to switch things around. So we can set our languages state by saying set languages, taking the items of our state, and then doing certain functionality over those items. So inside of the languages state, we can find where the active index is by saying const active index is equal to items dot, because now we're getting items through here, if anyone's curious about that. So this is different syntax of grabbing a state 
dot index of active dot ID. So it's going to try and find that element in our array. Then we can say the same thing for const over index. So what item are we over and what is its index in our array? And this is where we get help from the array move. Array move is important because of this. It's going to allow us to take the items array. For example, let's just say it's one, two, three. And then let's say that we drag this one to the bottom of our list. Like what would happen? We want the array to become two comma three comma one, right? That is what array move helps us do. And look at this one more time. If we want to go from index zero, so go from index zero to index two over here, for example, how is our array going to move? Well, we want this one to be dragged over here like this. Array move is going to return this two, three, one array if we give it these inputs and items with one, two, three, a start index of zero. So I'm gonna say start index and then like an end index of two. It's also easier to be, maybe you think of it like the old index where it used to be or the new index where we want it to go, for example. And so if we pass those three parameters in, which we're actually about to do, it's going to return an items of two comma three comma one. So that's how our state moves around. So let's do that here. We can pass in items like normal, and then we can say, okay, this active index wants to move to the item it's currently over. So we can say active index comma, move it to wherever the over index is like this and then return here because this returned array move is then going to overwrite whatever value our language is currently is. So if we want to see this working in action, we can actually console.log the results of this array move as well. So let's go back to our application and we can see, I have a JavaScript here initially, it's going to go over JavaScript, so no functionality is going to get called. But if I move JavaScript over Python, boom, look at what happens. Array move allowed us to move JavaScript over Python and it shoved Python to the left. TypeScript still is going to stay on the bottom and JavaScript's in the middle now. And so that's why we see these three elements here is because our state actually got changed. And as you guys can see, we can move these elements however we want and this state's always going to be logged here. It's also nice that we get access to the state here, for example, because let's say you were making some type of quiz application and you wanted the chronological order of three different events. You could check this state after the user like submits a form or something, for example, and see like, oh, did these events happen in like a one, two, three order? And so that's another really interesting thing on top of this is you have access to the order that the user currently has your elements, which is something you really can't take for granted. All right, guys, so that is pretty much the project. Hopefully you learned more about DND Kit. This is really only scratching the surface of what it allows you to do. And so if you guys are interested in creating interfaces with this stuff, for example, let me know. Thanks so much for watching.